we're going to go over uh, all aspects of, of shallow cranking. And you know, a lot of people like to shallow crank bait fish because sometimes you can, you can kind of just go down the bank. You don't have to think about mm -hmm. it. You just go down the bank and you can catch a few fish. We're going to take it to the next level and really explore ways to catch a lot more fish, ways you can go right behind people and catch fish, um, things to kind of key on and, and um, you know, some visually, visualization techniques that you can use to, to catch a lot more fish. And I try to keep it steady. You know, I don't, I don't run it at three quarter throttle and go woof, 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 because the fish can hear the same thing. I try to run it at, you know, maybe a, a quarter to three eighths of full speed and I want to do a constant speed and run around. And if, you, if anybody's fished with a power pole, you can definitely use it for shallow crankbait fishing. You get around, you get that boat in the right position, you run that, run that power pole down and you can fire, fire, fire. And then you can, and you don't have to stay on the trolling motor to keep your boat positioned properly. That's a, that's a good question. And you know, being, being quiet like that is, is definitely key. Look, all the places I grew up fishing, shallow crankbait worked. So it seemed like, you know, I would, I would go from one place to the next and I'd always have a shallow crankbait on. Things would get kind of tough. I'd pick it up, fire it out there. Next thing I knew, I started catching a fish or two. So everywhere I went, I started catching fish on shallow crankbaits. And then once I, once I started fishing full time, I would go down to Alabama. I would go down to Florida. I'd go all these different places. And it was kind of my fallback. I knew at home I could always fall back and catch fish on a shallow crankbait. And so when I'd go to New Lakes in Florida or New Lake in Alabama or Tennessee, somewhere like that, I would ride around and look for places like I had fished back at home growing up, throw on a crankbait. I wouldn't just fire it out there in the middle of a, you know, on a random bluff, you know, in, with clear water, you know, that it has to fit what you're looking for. And we'll go, we'll get into that in a little bit. So that, that's kind of how I started. And, you know, it's amazing. You can, you can catch fish on shallow crankbaits on almost any lake uh, for the majority of the year, I would say. So it's a, uh, it's a good technique to come familiar with because you can catch a lot of fish, you can find fish quickly, and you can catch big fish doing it too. And then I lost four in a row. And after I lost four in a row, I didn't feel so hot because, you know, I just caught all these fish and then I'm looking like an idiot, you know, jumping all these fish off. So I reeled my bait in and I looked at it. I'm like, what? Why are the, and, and the, the cameraman asked me, he said, what are you doing? I said, I'm trying to figure out why these fish are coming off. I just caught 10 in a row and then I lose four out of five. I'm like, I'm like, oh, and it hit me. I'm like, let me check the hooks. The front treble hook had gotten real dull because it was a little rocky area. It got real dull. I said, no, I can't make that big of a difference. I'm like, well, let me, ch let me change them anyway. So I put, you know, it was, there were number four Gamagatsu round bin. I put two brand new ones on. I told him, I said, let's see if this makes a difference. I, went, I proceeded to catch 10 more in a row without losing one. There were, there's no other situation I can explain to you how important you know, having sharp treble hooks is. So that's, just a, that's a perfect example of how you know, sharp hooks make a huge difference. Because I was fishing the same stretch. I, just kept going, I was going back and forth. They, they, don't go, they don't go right up to it and suck it in. They, go, they suck it in from this far away sometimes. I mean, they'll just suck that thing all the way in there. They do the same thing with a crankbait. So if you've got a rod that's too, too stiff, when that, when that fish goes to suck that crankbait in, he's only gonna be able to pull it this far and then your rod's gonna catch up with it. Your rod, if your rod's too stiff, you're only gonna, it's only, and then you're gonna get this, this much. He's only gonna maybe get this, and he may just bump the bait. And you're like, man, it felt like a fish hit it. Well, it did, but your rod was too stiff. If you have a rod with a softer taper, like the old fiberglass rods used to, now most of the manufacturers have figured out how to make graphite do the same thing. Now, if that, once that rod loads, that fish will suck on that crankbait and he'll, he'll suck it all the way into his mouth before that rod loads up. And then once it's in his mouth, usually you got enough sharp hooks that you can, you can hook up with them. So that's, that's why it's super important to use the right rod. And then once you get him on, you know, you can fight the fish around a lot easier with a rod that has a big bend in it, it wears them out. Um, and, and going to the reel into the rod, a lot of people ask me, how do you set your drag properly for a crankbait? Well, it's, it's kind of, uh, you know, people, have, what, what pound do you set? You know, because saltwater fishing, they set their drags by the pound. And I tell them, I say, I don't know. But the easiest way to do it is just to, to fire it out there, fire your crankbait, or, or to actually take your crankbait and hook it on something like 
that guy's pants over there, and then I would, I would uh, reel it up, and then I would pull on the rod until the rod is completely loaded. And once your rod is done loading, you know, you're pulling it, and, and it looks like it's, the rod's getting ready to break, and then if I pull it just a little harder, that's when I want my drag to slip. So you want, you, you want your rod to take as much load as it possibly can, and then you want your drag to, to, to kick in. And various rods have different actions, so it kind of dictates you know, how hard you can set your drag. Most of the time I'm fishing with 10, 12, and at the most 14 pound test when I'm shallow crankbait fishing. So you, even, even at that, you're probably not gonna even be close to what your, what your line, what the capacity of your line is you know, at that drag setting. It's gonna be less than your, than your, uh, your line test is. And uh, the reason for that is if you, if you hook, that on, hook that into a fish instead of that guy's pants over there, you pull back and you pull back, and when your rod is done loading, something's gonna give if that fish makes a run. It's either gonna be the line, he may pull harder than your pound test is, or the rod's gonna snap, or the, the, the worst thing that could happen is that the treble hooks tear out of the fish's mouth. So once the rod is done loading, something's gonna give. Something is gonna give, and quite often with, with treble hooks, I'm sure everybody's seen it, you know, you get, you get that treble hook hooked in some soft skin, uh, either inside or outside of the mouth, and once, once you get too much pressure on it, they're gone, they rip it off, the fish might make a little sayonara jump. That's always not so fun to watch. So, <laughs> so that's, uh, that's kind of why I set the drag setting the way I do, and, and uh, most everybody I've explained that to, they go, well, that makes sense. Like, yeah, that's, that's what I do. I drive down the road for 10 or 12 hours at a time and think about things like that. Hey, I'm Pete Gluzek. And I'm Mike Iaconelli. And this is Bass University TV. Welcome to Bass University TV, an online video training course where you'll learn champion bass fishing techniques from pro anglers Pete Gluzek, Mike Iaconelli, and their talented special guests. Everywhere I go in the country, I'm trying to use these techniques because I catch big fish that way. From on the water to in the classroom. We want to use that bait to help make that area even smaller and really, really find that sweet spot. You'll learn sound techniques and strong fundamental bass fishing skills. You want something that's got a nice limber action that's gonna allow you to build pressure and keep those hooks pinned against that fish's mouth. Watch hours of video content on multiple topics at your own pace for a low monthly fee. Cancel at any time. Hold on, because you're gonna catch some big <laughs> fish. Information is power in the sport of fishing, so learn from the very best. That's a key theory in all of fishing. Subscribe to Bass University TV today. Man, does it trigger a lot of strikes. Here's the part that you're not gonna hear anywhere else. This is the Bass University TV exclusive.